Welcome. Good to have you here on this episode of Leadership and Loyalty Tips for Executives. We're going to honor the passing of the greatest, Muhammad Ali. Why he was so unstoppable and the power of truly authentic relationships to assist you in tapping into your greatness, greatness that you may only at this point suspect that you have. So again, welcome to Leadership and Loyalty Tips, part of the Full Monty Leadership Series. I'm your host, Dov Barron, founder of Full Monty Leadership. If you're a new listener, viewer, thank you for joining us. Strap yourself in. We're about to go Full Monty. If you're a regular, big thank you to you for making us the number one podcast for Fortune 500 and consistently keeping us in the top 10 for family business, leadership, human resources, and a whole bunch of other categories. Thank you for sharing the show with everyone that you know. Remember, as always, we need your assistance in staying relevant. So get yourself over to iTunes, rate, review, and share the show. Make sure you subscribe. Always good to have you here. I was on this drive with my wife. Uh, now, at this point, I think we've been together probably about a year. We're in our 20th year now. And we're doing this long drive up the coast. It's a five hour drive. And, you know, we're chatting backwards and forwards. And you do is having one of those great drives, beautiful weather, windy roads, fantastic scenery all around, like mountains and cliffs and trees. And it's just stunning, stunning. And as we're driving along, I'm thinking about this piece that I'm working on for a workshop that I'm going to do. And so, I said to my wife, I've got this idea for a workshop, and I've got some pieces on it that are around self-accountability and self-awareness. And she goes, oh, okay. I said, you want to help me with it? And she said, um, sure, okay. I said, well, here's what I'll do. I'm going to tell you something, and then I want you to score it by writing it down and hiding it from me, and then I'll score it. She goes, I don't understand. I go, okay, well, here's an example. If I say generosity – You would write down how you score me on generosity, but don't let me see it. And then when you've written it down, you you say, okay, and then I will tell you how I would score myself on generosity. And then you would flip your paper and we see if it's a match. And she goes, oh, okay, that's cool. So we do this and we do it with a bunch of things. And to be honest, it's pretty great because most of it is certainly within one point, which is pretty great. So I felt like I, you know, I'm feeling good about myself. I'm feeling like I have great self-awareness that she scored me on kindness, this, and I scored myself close to that, and um, decisiveness, she scores me, and I scored, it's all over. I'm like, oh, this is great. This is really good. And then I said, living in my passion, living on purpose and in my passion. So she goes, okay. So she scores me. And, and she goes, all right, and score yourself. And I say out loud, mm, I give myself a nine. She says, oh, okay, good. And then there's this silence. I'm just, well, what do you score me? doesn't matter. Yeah, it does. What did you score me? She goes, do you really want to know? I go, yes, I want to know. She flips the paper over, and there on that sheet of paper is a seven. A seven. I'm driving down the road. <laughs> it's hard for me to stay on the road. I'm so pissed. Seven? Are you kidding me? Seven? Who do you know who's living more in their passion, more on purpose than I am? That's insane. Why the hell would you score me a seven? She looks at me, and she says, Dove. I realized that most people would score you an 11 out of 10. You're right. I don't know anybody who lives more in their passion or more in their purpose than you do. I said, then why the heck would you score me a 7? She says, because that's where you are at the potential of where you can be. You're not stepping into an eight, a nine, or a 10 yet. You're still playing at a seven. I don't compare you to other people. I compare you to you and what you're capable of. Bam, knockout punch. She was absolutely right. Probably why I married her. She said, absolutely right. She nailed me right there. 
One of the major differences between you, me, and other high achievers and someone like Muhammad Ali is two things. One, the unwavering pursuit of his own untapped greatness, his unwavering pursuit of and willing, like refusal to live at seven, even if it looks like an 11 to everybody else. That was number one. And number two, that he was never going to sit on his laurels. He was never going to sit on his laurels. And then on top of that was the X factor. And the X factor, you've heard me talk about this if you've been regulate before, the X factor is this unshakable certainty that in the face of potential ridicule, potential failure, potential rejection, that he was going to go for what he wanted, what he decided was important. Cassius Clay, as he was known back in those days, won a gold medal in the Olympics for boxing for the U.S. team. He stood on the podium and received the adoration, the accolades of the world, only to return home to pre-civil rights U.S., where he couldn't sit down in a local restaurant and order food in his hometown. In his hometown, the message wasn't that he was the greatest, but rather that he was not good enough to eat with white people, that he didn't know his place. But he was not willing to tug his forelock and say, yes, a massa. He was the big mouth. He claimed his own greatness, while other African-Americans at that time played small. He was a symbol not only to his own greatness, not even to the greatness of, that was suppressed within the black people of the world. He became a symbol of greatness to all of us who were told that we were not good enough for reasons of color or race or any other factor that may have intimidated someone else who wanted to keep you down. And you may have experienced that, that somebody told you you weren't good enough. Maybe it was race, maybe it was color, maybe it was something else. Maybe that you were dyslexic. Maybe it was that your hair was the wrong color. Maybe it was that you didn't think in the way that other people thought. Maybe it was in some other way, but they told you you weren't good enough. He didn't let that get in the way. He had that unwavering pursuit of his own excellence. He went on from being an amateur to being a pro fighter, where he would have his goal of becoming heavyweight champion of the world. However, where Ali was so different from others, where he was just so different from so many around us, was that not only did he set the goal and go for the goal, but he knew that there was something even more important than the goal. That he had a crystal clear personal value system, personal maxims that were so absolutely clear that were more important than any of that. And as a result, you know, he achieved this goal of being heavyweight champion in the world and certainly wanted to keep that. But then when he was drafted, to go to Vietnam, he said no. He re in his words, he refused to fly off to another country and kill people he didn't know who were probably more like him than the people who were sending him to war. Wow. And they stripped him, they stripped him of his, of, of his heavyweight championship. Why? Because of his internal value system, because of his personal maxims were more important than his grand goals. That's the distinction. It's not good enough to have great goals. It's the knowing of the deep driver within, the personal maxims, the why, the purpose of what it is you're doing that makes all the difference. That is what made Muhammad Ali the greatest. Because you and I all know that you can set the goal, you can go for the goal, 
You can be inspired towards the goal, but there's always going to be, as I said in my book, don't read this, your ego won't like it, the SH factor, S-H factor. Shit happens. You can't always control everything. Muhammad Ali could control how he went into that ring. He could can even control his opponents and get inside of their head. But he couldn't control the war in Vietnam. He couldn't control that the, the, the American government got involved in a war. He couldn't control that he was going to get drafted. But he could control his inner being. He could control that he knew what mattered to him more than anything. And he held absolutely true to that. Now, for some of us, we need external validation. We need the accolades. And, he, you know, he's clearly enjoyed riling people up. And he was not afraid to polarize. There, for, for as much as we now stand around at his passing and think, what a loss, what a great man. You know, he was such an icon. It doesn't take much to travel back in time, even through reading or, or even online, and discover that he was at least equally hated as he was loved. But he was willing to do that. And one of the things that stops you and me and, and so many from reaching that level of greatness, taking it up from a 7 to an 11, is that very thing, is that we're afraid of having people dislike us. We're afraid of that. But you will never know your greatness. You will never know the depth of connection that is possible until you embrace the possibility of the kind of rejection that you deeply fear. That's what made Ali a great, is that he was unwavering in both his centered being and his purpose in knowing why he was doing what he's doing and the set of maxims and values that he had about that while traveling towards the goal so that it all had meaning and had purpose in spite of the shit that happens around him, in spite of being thrown up against the wall, in spite of everything that mattered being stripped away. He held true to what was true for him. So let me ask you, what is the part of you that sleeps? The part of you that sleeps and that only in your dreams whispers your greatness to you, that gives you a view of that greatness. What would happen if you let it wake up? What would happen if you got so connected to why you're going to the goal, not just the goal, because who cares, but why you're going there, why it matters, and that when crap happens, that's where you go to. What would happen to the quality of your life? What would happen to the quality of everything you do? That's what true inspiration is. Inspiration is in spiritus. It means to be inspired from within, to be in touch with the greatness that some call God, in spiritus. It is more than motivation. It is inspiration that comes from within. You want to be inspired? Get in touch with what really matters to you. Ask yourself that question. What is the hill I'm willing to die on? What is it I'm willing to fight for? Because it wasn't the world championship. It wasn't being the, the, the heavyweight champion of the world. That's what it looked like to Ali. It was something much more. Otherwise, he would have kept his title and gone to Vietnam. And he didn't. And that's why Muhammad Ali was the greatest. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Dove Barron. You've been listening to Full Monty Leadership, to the Leadership and Loyalty Tips for Executives podcast. You want to find out more about me, what it is that I do, and how I can serve you, get yourself over to fullmontyleadership.com. And until next time, stay curious, my friends. Stay curious and watch out for the Leadership Matrix. You'll find it at matrix.fullmontyleadership.com. Matrix.fullmontyleadership.com. That's my gift to you. Till next time, stay curious, my friends. Stay curious. Thank you.